Hello everyone and welcome back to another Movie Nights review. We have a television one for you this time as I'm trying to get more of these in. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to watch all of the live-action Avatar The Last Airbender Netflix series early. Thank you very much to the people who let that happen. And I'm very excited to share my thoughts with you, so let's dive right in. By the way, this is completely spoiler-free. I will not be spoiling anything for you. For those of you that don't know, this show is based on a very popular Nickelodeon show that I watched when I was younger. I watched it as it aired and it was such a fantastic show. And while I have seen the show and I have watched it in its entirety, there are die-hard fans of that show that live and breathe Avatar The Last Airbender. And while I love that show, I don't have it this I don't have the same reverence for it as some of the diehard fans do. So I'm approaching this review as someone who has seen the show and is aware of what some people might be looking for and approaching it from a place where maybe who's someone who's never watched it and how they might feel about it. And I'll start by saying this. If you're a fan of the original cartoon show, is it an anime? I've seen some discourse and debate on that. Regardless, if you're a fan of that show, you will most likely be a fan of this show. A lot of it is adapted very close to that original show, and they even include things that you've always wanted to see as a fan of that show. Again, I'm being vague as no spoilers. It also does an interesting job in its adaptation of combining different storylines from different episodes and different characters and kind of trying to make it fit into a what this sees as a better narrative, sometimes to its benefit and sometimes to its detriment. And I'll kind of use that as a springboard to go into some critiques of the show. One thing that it has a hard time doing is balancing the tone, because there are some parts of this that is very thematically deep and dark storytelling on a tr trying to be more epic and grand with its live action setting, while also kind of having the cartoony kind of humor that the original show has. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. And I'd say specifically, the first half of the season, the first four episodes, really struggles with that tone balance. I think the second half of the series is a lot better than the first half. I think episodes five through eight really pick up its stride, it figures out its footing, it knows what it wants to be, and it sticks the landing quite well. Not to say that they're perfect, but it did seem like a much more sound and confident show in the second half. And I thought the pilot was well done as well. They, they do a very good job establishing what's gonna be new and what's gonna be the same right from the get-go. Oh, and there's a thing that the second episode does, again, I'm being vague, towards the end of the second episode that is so cool <laughs> that while I don't love the second episode of the show, I think it might be the weakest of the show. The ending is so awesome. I was like, dang, there are going to be a, lo a lot of Avatar fans who freak out when they see that. Getting into more specifics of the show, um, I thought the CGI and the visual effects were actually quite good for the most part. Um, there's a ton of visual effects in the show, as you might anticipate, if you know anything about the show. And only... A couple times in the eight episodes was I kind of taken aback by the VFX. And it's mostly just because it's a human face, like a human face VFX. There's one in the first or second episode. I, I'm having a hard time remembering. But there's a close-up on Aang's face that's rough because it's pure CG. And that's the only time I, it was really taking me out of it. The rest of it looks pretty great. Uh, the action scenes... Very well done. I thought the choreography was great for the most part, especially anything with the Fire Nation. Just their fighting style is fucking awesome. And from a storytelling point of view, uh, and this is not probably not going to come as a shock to fans of the show, the Uncle Iroh and Zuko storyline is the best storyline of the show. And I think their dynamic, their backstory that they have really kind of carries the show whenever it falters. If you're uninterested in what's happening, you find you find you're telling yourself like, "Why well, I have to keep watching because I'm so in interested in that storyline. And the character of Zuko in this series does get a lot of expositional dialogue and, you know, info dumping in the first couple episodes, which is unfortunate because I think the actor Dallas Liu, sorry if I pronounce any names, I'm sorry I pronounce, if I pronounce them wrong, I thought he does a good job, but I just kind of felt bad that the character had to do a lot of that in the beginning of the show. And the show does do a lot of that. It's almost like the, the Percy Jackson Harry Potter issue of there's a lot to cover and not the most time in the world to do so so therefore we're gonna have characters say how they feel a lot and say some backstory a lot which can be annoying sometimes it's done very well sometimes it's not done very well at all and something that i think a lot of fans of the show are gonna find and possibly be disappointed by is and for people who are my age watching the show were kids when the original show was airing 
And something that might be a little bit of a shock to them when they watch the show is that this show is not going to be tonally catered towards them. It's going to be tonally catered towards new kids. And because a lot of it is kind of child centric, which makes sense. The lead character is 12 years old after all. But when you're dealing with like a deep lore and themes, it can kind of not mesh together well, which is kind of hinting at the tonal balance I mentioned earlier. But like I said, about halfway through the show, towards the end, it really picks up what it wants to be and finishes very strong. And part of that due to the performances. I think that Gordon Cormier does a great job as Aang. I think that uh, Kyo Wanitio, sorry again if I said it wrong, is very good as Katara. Although Katara is the most sidelined of the trio in the show. Daniel Day Kim is great as Fire Lord Ozai. But I, I, I have to say there's two big standouts of the cast. And that is... Ian Ostley as Sokka, amazing job. It's He's perfect. And um, this should come as no surprise, but uh, Paul's son, Young Lee, as Uncle Iroh, it's perfect. It's everything you want Uncle Iroh to be. Something else that I think fans are going to really love about the show is its use of music. It has a lot of music from the original show, some in obvious places and some in not so obvious places. Uh, there's a particular music cue and a flashback scene that's going to brings some tears to a lot of people's eyes. That's all I'll say. The only thing that kind of worries me is I'm not sure how people who have never seen the original show are going to feel about this show. They're going to love the backstory. They're going to love the lore. It's a fascinating story. But I don't know if the tonal inconsistency of the first couple episodes is going to get people to fall off Who for people who aren't fans. That is a bit worrisome because overall, I did enjoy the show. I think it's quite good. I think it's going to be a foundation and build to an even stronger second and third season, kind of like the original show did. And I also think that the tone of that show is going to grow up, if you will, with those seasons, as you see with like the Harry Potter franchise. I'm hoping it does work for people who have never watched the show before. I'm just worried that it might not. And if you're looking for it to be just a direct repeat of the original animated show, a lot of it is, which may surprise you, but not all of it is. So, you know, don't, that's not what the show should be anyway. So don't be really looking forward to that. I know a lot of people were kind of worried about the show and the original creator stepped away. And I, I don't know the reasoning for it. It's still kind of a bit unclear, but um, I was pleasantly surprised by the show. I kind of was expecting disappointment a little bit and the disappointment I felt we're only in a few small aspects of the show, but not in the overall storytelling of the show as a whole. Because while there are some cartoony, childish moments for the trio that we all know and love, these small, quiet moments between side characters, between, you know, Uncle Iroh and members of different nations that the Fire Nation has fucked up, like, there's so much good shit in it also that it keeps you intrigued enough to keep watching. And, it, and like I said, it ends strong. So... Overall, I thought it was a decent show. I'm going to be watching the new seasons as they come out, but I do think there's a lot that can be improved on. And once you guys watch it, what did you think of Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action series? I'd love to get your thoughts. And if you'd like me to do a spoiler review, I'd love to do that as well. Just let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.